Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chris with Digital Rim, and this is a continuation of the introduction to Blender. So we left off last in the video with the uh, in the 3D viewer. We were in the middle of uh, middle header here, um, where we had the we did the transformation of the cursor or the cursor options, the pivot point options, the snap the tool, snap to snap options. <laughs> Uh, the proportional editing options here. So now we're going to go over into the viewing options, and this is the it's so about opinion, but this is the funner part and the the part I use the most when when modeling or viewing um, in 3D Blender. What I'm going to do is first is get rid of or knock these out of the way so we can see better and I definitely I've been navigating around blender and I don't believe I've covered that so we're gonna cover that as well the navigation and we're gonna cover that first actually so you will have a better understanding when we're trying to view um, so first things first when you want to switch from uh, perspective to orthographic view orthographic view being flat on it's a flat it's flat as if you're standing right on the x-axis y-axis or z-axis like so so you get a straight on left side right side front back top bottom um, and then you have perspective view which it it adds in the camera information so you get a little more perspective a little more um, depth of field put it like that you get a little more depth of field um, you can toggle between the camera now you see this this little arrow looking thing here I'm gonna scale it up bigger just so we can see this thing that kinda looks like a camera maybe like a a camera with the little arrow on top this is the camera you can toggle to see what it looks like by hitting zero or selecting it, hitting zero, usually hitting zero. I don't know why it's not doing it now. Uh, I don't know. But you can you can toggle it into the camera by hitting this as well. Um, you also can move view. So if you left click and hold and then drag, you can move your view or pan around your view same thing left click drag you can zoom in and out of your view um, so how I'm doing this on the fly actually um, if you shift middle mouse click hold middle mouse click and while you're holding middle mouse click clicking and while you're holding the middle mouse button and shift at the same time and move your mouse you'll pan if you just hold your middle mouse button you'll rot and move around you'll rotate around the object and if you scroll your middle mouse button you'll scroll in and out so back is up front is down and I'll, all of these you can change in the user preferences in the uh, in the scene so everything can be changed to how you want it to be laid out so that's an option as well um, but I'm still not sure why I can't usually if you hit zero it'll pop to the camera and we're I'm not gonna bother myself with trying to figure that out right now because I want to keep this video short so you can also rotate around the scene if you uh, left click drag you can rotate around the camera if you click with the X Y or Z it will go to the orthographic view of that so you get front you can get the back it's like that and that's good for modeling so when you when you bring a character in that you drew and you put it up and you have the image here and you put it up against the uh, drawing you can pretty much move all your points to match the characters features from your drawing so or sculpting so you can sculpt um, exactly 
what you drew from the correct angle because you don't want to draw something straight on and then have your camera like this make sense makes sense all right so we're going to go into this right header bar part so this this is where you could toggle off the object visibility you can do this either this way you know there's multiple ways you can do everything in here but you can toggle off all mesh which this is being a mesh you can toggle, toggle off all curves you can toggle off the say cameras but this just takes it where you can't see it you can just do it where you can't select it that's where that lives so you can toggle all of those off you also have the uh, viewport gizmos which I showed you before when I tried to select this and it didn't have the gizmos and they have the gizmos like this so I turned them on now it has it like that sorry yeah so like that now it has it so again you can pretty much look at all the gizmos this is very important this is new in 2.8 which I love that they put this in this program um, this is new in 2.8 you can just pretty much all of all of the options that you would need to view what you're trying to see will be right here in the upper right hand corner upper right hand corner if you if it's something you're trying to view or trying to see or trying to make your scene look like more than likely it will be up here in the upper right hand corner let me get that out of the way so I'm getting these out of the way just so you can see what I'm talking about so let's say I have this this model that I done I've done and now I want to do it look at it in wireframe mode you can simply go here to show or show wireframe mode and look it's in wireframe mode so now you can you can edit it in wireframe mode like so so it's in wireframe mode you can put it into what, what do they call this mode viewport shading I, I just call it default shading mode you can do it in the in a viewer mode or what's it this has a viewport shading um, oh solid this was solid mode and this is look dev mode and I'll show you what look dev mode is more options in a second and this is your cycle your render mode so you get a real-time rendering of what your object possibly could look like when when it's um, being rendered so it calculates lighting on the fly so you can see what it looks like with lighting which that's pretty cool so you can sit here and model your object and see how the lighting changes. Or when we rotate it or pretty much how you how you would set up your lighting. You can see it on the fly. So that's that's the last one, which is the rendered mode. And then you can also go back into, let's say go back into the solid mode and you can toggle this option on which allows you to see through the mesh so usually this, this is good when you're trying to select through a mesh so see how I can only select the point on this side and I can't select the point on that side well when you select this option now you can kinda see a trained eye, a trained 3D eye can definitely see this big time but you can see these points are on the back side and these these points here on the front side but I'm gonna do this I'm gonna select I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna select these two points one of these points is on this side of the face let's go back and let's take it off of a wireframe one point is on this side of the face the other point is on that side of the face that's good for if you have like let's let's do it a quick example um add cube that's good for if you have something that's let's say complex a wall or something 
or even a lot of the times I'm I'm modeling I'm modeling a wall or some type of thing and I put it in wireframe mode so I can essentially slide or it's still in essentially slide all of these on the same or select at least select them but I can manipulate all this selection and I can select them all that's the main thing I can select them all where I can manipulate them all without having to go around the object and select each individual one so that's when you will use that the most um, again now you probably notice this little, little drop down arrow next to it that's very important as well because if you go into wireframe mode and select that it allows you to it allows you to change the settings of that particular mode which is <laughs> super cool to me but it allows you to change the settings of that individual mode so you can change the setting I'm just clicking through right now but see I made this like a purplish I don't know when you would ever use that but again this is mainly I'm just wanted to show you that you can change the settings by just hitting this drop down so we're going to go into solid mode and again you can change the settings settings this is one of my favorites because uh, this is one of my favorites because if you notice in your solid mode you hit this drop down button button uh, experience uh, 3D artists are familiar with matte cap and matte cap it allows you some more of a more realistic um, I guess materials if you want to just call it materials for a better reason but shaders but it allows you to view your object a little differently so let's say you're creating a car and you want to see if your object is smooth enough or shiny enough or you know it doesn't have these like little lines these hard lines in it you can view that without even having to create a shader for it or you can view it in all of these different ways and how I did that was you hit this drop down and you go into mat cap and you just click the circle and it gives you all of these options I did it kinda quick the first time I've actually even this option I've seen people create normal maps just by selecting this option and rendering it straight on like this and they'll create a normal map it's pretty cool so, um, I'm gonna put it back in the studio mode. You can again, you can go ahead and click through all of these options. Um, as you just, I suggest you just click through everything and see what it does. It takes a, a little bit of time. Uh, uh, quick tip: always, I say always. I don't know how everybody else feels. But always have back face calling checked on. Back face calling allows you to see which normals are flipped the wrong way. Normals being the faces. Sometimes you're modeling and this face is facing the wrong way, and what that does is mess up the, your lighting of your scene. That's more a little more advanced than the introduction, but you'll understand later on. So if you see back face calling when you hit this drop down, always leave it on and you'll be good. So just leave this on. This x-ray does the same thing as we just talked about earlier. You can just x-ray it like that. It actually allows you to manipulate it a little more. So you kind of get the idea of what I, where, where we're going here. You get all of these options. You just play around with them. See what you like. Do what you do. Flat shading. Same thing. Alright, you have other options as well here. Um, in the and what's this one called the look dev mode so you have other options where you can apply lighting now you can see what the lighting looks like if you have a material we don't necessarily have a material right now but you can see if you if you look very closely actually I'm just I'm just create something real quick just so you can see but yeah if you look real close you can see like the lighting and this is just for just to get a sense of what the material looks like in real somewhat real lighting so this is like a sunset it will be a somewhat realistic lighting and that's when you'll, you'll get a better idea 
at the same lights world and this is all look there I mean this is all on the fly you can manipulate these you can change these um, you can probably add more so just click through it now you have the uh, actual render this this node this one is the one you're actually you're actually going to you don't have any options but you're actually going to see what your object looks like when you render it so or the closest to what your object will look like when you render it so again this is this is I'm usually between between I, I skip look dev mode but I'm usually between this solid mode in a in a studio version when I'm modeling out and then when I want to when I want to see what how smooth it is or what it looks like depending on what I'm modeling I put it into matcap mode to kind of see like if it's a character this is like skin so I try to find something that's similar to what I'm trying to model and see what it looks like and then when I get out of that I go straight into render mode and set my lights and see what it looks like with the textures and everything else that I set up and we'll get into textures and stuff in a later video but that's pretty much the conclusion of the header bar here um, one thing I did uh, lightly touched on each object has this uh, this um, what do they call it, the sidebar here where you get uh, some additional tabs for whatever you have selected or your scene so you can manipulate things in this, in this tab like I showed you before but this is also where you'll find additional additional uh, settings for your add-ons and things like that so just be mindful this is here um, in later videos you'll probably notice that we go into the sidebar tab where something lives and then you'll get a better understanding of what that's used for but this sidebar tab changes again changes with each individual uh, each individual scene so as you change scenes be mindful of that sidebar tab if you can't find it anywhere else you might it might live right there in that sidebar tab uh, for example when you when you do get into camera mode when you get into camera mode you can zoom in but it's zooming the actual the actual uh, composition I'll, I'll call it that it's zooming the composition but you sometimes you or I'm used to um, rotating the actual camera and what you would do is once you're in the camera mode or select camera once you're in the camera mode you go to that uh, sidebar and go to view or it might be in here too as well I just know it to be over here so I'm gonna just keep what, what I know for the video purposes so lock camera to view and then when you just select that little check now you can lock your camera to your view so now your camera lives here so when you render it's gonna look just like this because this is your this is your camera you have set up so let's just render this real quick when you render it it's gonna be right there that's your camera when you render it again it's gonna be right there so you're setting up your camera to what angle you want it to be at and then to get back out of it just hit out your hit the camera right there and you get right out of it so again that's how you do that um, that's just a good general overview of this 3d viewer um, in the next video we're gonna cover the outliner and the uh, properties of the 3d scene so stay tuned for the next video and I hope you enjoyed this one there you go